Welcome role players. my name is Mario, and let's teach you the basics of Savage Worlds trait tests and dice rolls. Characters in Savage Worlds are defined by attributes and skills, otherwise known as traits. They start with a d4 die, then continue upwards to a d6, d8, d10, and d12 at the top. For instance, when rolling a trait test such as the driving or shooting skills, that skill's die type will be used in the roll. All player characters in Savage Worlds are considered wild cards, which grants various abilities including the use of the wild die. The wild die is a d6 that is rolled along with your trait die. Nearly every player role in Savage Worlds allows the wild die, the primary exception to this rule being damage rolls. Here we have a trait test using a d8 trait and also rolling the wild die, a d6. You may use the higher result for either die, but they are never combined. The wild die is always an alternate path. In this case, our roll of a 5 on the d8 is higher, so the wild die is discarded. Since Savage Worlds is built around fast, furious fun, all dice may ace, a mechanic commonly referred to as exploding. If a dice rolls its maximum value, you can roll an additional die of the same type and add it to the original die. This can continue to occur when subsequent rolls are also the maximum possible value for that die type, leading to powerful moments and very high totals. Here I've rolled a d8 trait die and the d6 wild die. An 8 came up for the d8, its maximum value, so it aces and I roll another d8 adding it to the original score of 8. This leaves me with either a 2 on the wild die or a 12 on the trait die. My final roll total is 12. In this example, both the trait die and the wild die have aced, and additional dice are rolled for each. Once the new rolls have been added together with the original dice, our final options are 10 from the trait die or 11 from the wild die. You keep the higher result, the 11. But what happens when you need to pick a lock, but you lack the lock picking skill? You still get to roll a d4 and your wild die for unskilled attempts, but you suffer a minus 2 penalty on the roll. It's important to remember that any modifiers, whether they are positive or negative, are taken after any aces are calculated. In this scenario, the d4 aces and the new total is 6. Since this is higher than the wild die, we take it and apply the minus 2 modifier, leaving us with a final roll of 4. However, modifiers aren't the only penalties that exist in Savage Worlds. If at any time you roll snake eyes, or a 1 on both your trait die and your wild die, this is a critical failure. The GM decides what bad luck has brought down upon you. So how do you know if your roll was successful? That's easy in Savage Worlds. The target number for trait tests is a 4. Savage Worlds uses modifiers to alter the rolls rather than the target. Thus, success is defined by your final total being a 4 or higher. If your total is 8, you also get what's called a raise. Every 4 points over the target number is a raise. Thus, 4 to 7 is a success, 8 to 11 is a success with a raise, 12 to 15 is a success with two raises, and so on. Finally, one key element of Savage Worlds is the use of bennies. These are markers, such as metal coins or poker chips, that each player and the GM receive at the start of a game session. These can be spent to re-roll trait rolls, excluding a critical failure. As long as you have them, you may continue to spend bennies and re-rolling, hoping for a better outcome. You keep the best result, even if it was your initial roll. Here I've rolled a d8 trait die and a d6 wild die to disappointing results. So, I spend a Benny and re-roll. This result is better, a 4, so I keep the new result. Thanks for watching! You now know the basics of trait tests in Savage Worlds.